Using the latest tools inside of Adobe Aero, I created four immersive augmented reality riddles where you explore an AR landscape while learning about your brain. Welcome to part two of this four-part tutorial series where I break down my key components to my brain explorations. In this tutorial, I will show you how I model assets with Adobe Dimension and how I animated them with triggers in Aero. Let's get started. Let's start off in Adobe Dimension. So up at the top left corner, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Create New. This is our main viewer, and the three most important keys to note is the right mouse button lets you orbit around, so I'm right-clicking and dragging. Uh, the middle mouse button lets you pan. And then to select stuff in here, it's a left click and drag. Take a look up here. We got our basic shapes and we have models, as well as if you keep scrolling, we have textures and materials. So almost everything that we're gonna be doing is gonna be using this panel. We're gonna start off with the cylinder. So I just click it here. And to orbit around, again, I'm using my right mouse button. And we have a nice little uh, cylinder. What I'm first gonna do is go to the cylinder's uh, radius and turn it down a lot so that we have a nice thin tree. Next, we're gonna go to the number of sides, and since I want a low poly kind of look, I'm reducing the number of sides of the tree uh, trunk to make it look more low poly. There we go. All right, uh, cool, I'm happy with that. Let's make the tree part, the bushes. So you're gonna use a sphere, and we're gonna drag it up on here. These are called manipulators. You can drag along these arrows to lock it onto a certain axis when you're moving. And we can do Control Z to undo. And then this is to rotate it along that axis. And then this one's the magnet tool. It kind of just sticks to a side. All right, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and modify the sphere. So I'm gonna go up to the radius and turn it up. Lovely. Then I'm gonna go to the number of sides and reduce it so that we can really see all the blockiness of our tree asset here. Something like that looks fun to me. Cool, and I'm gonna actually copy this sphere a couple of times. So we'll do Control C, Control V to paste it. And then I'll be resizing the radius. Control C, Control V, pasting. I'm moving it over here and increase that radius. Control C, Control V. I'm gonna move it. Uh, if you wanna move it can drag you know these arrows as well great control C control V to paste I'm gonna push one to the back here and shrink down the radius okay so we have a nice little tree asset modeled here in Adobe dimension uh, and that was all using the basic shapes if we scroll down here we have the ability to get to the materials and if you don't want to scroll down you can use these buttons to filter out just the models or just the materials. And we have Adobe standard materials as well as some substance materials. So what I might want to do is color the trunk with some wood textures. So I'll go to the uh, this whatever material here and just left click and drag it right onto our model. Next I'm going to um, apply a, a metal material to the bushes. So they got this nice green one and I love how reflective it is. I love the paint material in there. I can just drag this onto different parts of the spheres and we're essentially texturing our model of this low poly tree. Um, things to note, you can mo uh, modify the exact quality of a texture over here. We have our base colors. Um, you could upload your own texture if you had one or you can go to a solid color if you wanted and just use that to kind of color code your artwork or we can just use the image, but it's really cool that you have these options. Okay, but I'm happy with this tree and I wanna use it in augmented reality, so I wanna show you just how easy it is to get this out of here. First, select all of your model, and you know that it's selected because you see these blue lines uh, form around it. And then we go up to the top right corner and there's this little upload button. If you click on it, it has the option to save a JP uh, PNG or these ones. You can export a selected model or you can export selected for arrow. That's what we wanna do. So I'm gonna click on export selected for arrow. It takes a second to process, it gives you a little information about how it might take a few minutes, but since our model is so small, it's very quick, it's already ready. So we can click on export. And I like to save it into my Creative Cloud library under Adobe Arrow. And I have a folder called Brain, and I'm gonna put this under my Experience 2 tutorial. 
and I'm going to call this low poly tree underscore two and save it. And right off the bat, it's exporting out. And now we're done. We've made an asset that will work really nicely in Adobe Arrow. And that's what we'll jump into now. Uh, we have lots of cool stuff going on in this experience, but I want to talk about these trees. We got to get these in here. So I click on the edit button in the uh, top left corner. And then the bottom left corner, we get the plus sign. I'm gonna go to Creative Cloud. I'm gonna go to Arrow. I'm gonna go to my brain experiences. Where are they here? And we'll go to um, XP2. And then here are my trees. So I'm gonna try this low poly tree and hit open. It takes a second to load, but we can tap to place it. And now we have our object in here. And a couple navigation techniques. You tap it and drag with one finger to place it. You can scale it up and down with a pinching of the screen gesture. You can also use two fingers to rotate on your screen to rotate an object. And if you need to lift it up to a higher peak, like let's say I need to bring it up, use three fingers on the screen and you drag upwards or downwards. That's how you can uh, move it up and down. Notice what happens is we have a sequence of events. We have this brain exploration, and then we have this instruction that appears, and then we have some assets appear. These are using what's called a weight trigger. I'm gonna show you how we can add our very own. So let's say with this tree asset, we wanted it to appear and do something at a certain time. Well, we need to add what's called a behavior. So tap on the behaviors button here, and we're gonna create what's called a trigger. And right now, I'm gonna make it work right at the start. So on the start, I want an action to happen. Now these are a bunch of the triggers that exist in this version of Adobe Arrow right now. They're awesome. We're going to add a hide trigger. And if you hit the play button here, you can see what that trigger is going to do. And below you get some information. So the subject is what object is going to be triggered and the duration is how long that um, trigger is going to take. And you have some ways of interpolating it and you can hit check mark. So now at the start of the animation, it's going to hide and then I want it to wait. So uh, we click on the actions and I go to the wait tag near the bottom and I want this to wait about three seconds and hit the check mark. All right, so it's gonna hide, it's gonna wait for three seconds, and then after three seconds in the actions, I want it to show. And you can tap that play button to see what it's gonna do. That duration's pretty interesting, so if I increase this a little bit here and hit the play button, you can see how it can show slowly, which we'll do for now. And I'll hit the check mark. So now if I hit the preview, watch what happens. Boom, it hides. We wait for about three seconds and then it slowly shows. And this is how we can create really nice timing to our motion graphics inside of Adobe Arrow. Next thing I want to draw your attention to is the ability to aim things inside of Adobe Arrow. So take a look at the text that says, find the riddle. Notice how no matter where I move my device, this text is always aiming at the screen. I could be over here and it rotates to follow and aim at me. If I go over here, it aims at me. So how do we do this? What we're gonna do now is use this image to create an aim trigger. So when I hit preview by itself, notice how by default, when I move my camera around, it doesn't aim at us. So it makes it really hard to read from an angle like this. So to add an aim, we go to the behaviors tag with the object selected and we create a trigger. I want this to aim right at the start. And then the action we want it to do is the aim, which is near the middle here. The subject is what object is going to be doing the aiming, and the aim target is where it's going to aim at. The camera is quite literally this device right now, the one that we're looking through. So I want it to aim at us. And I'll show you what it looks like with, uh, with billboard only turned off, and then we'll, we'll show you the other way in a second. So take a look when I hit preview. Boom. Now as I rotate my device, notice how the object always aims at us. So it makes it really easy to read text when it's always aiming at us. Now, if we wanted to pivot on an axis, we go back to that behavior. We go back to the aim and turn on billboard only. And when we hit preview, now it aims at us, but it's never gonna tilt upwards. So if I go above it, it stays kind of locked down, which can be a nice uh, effect as well. Thank you so much for watching part two of four on the making of these immersive AR riddles. Adobe Arrow was pretty awesome, right? 
Well, we're only halfway through because in part three, I'm gonna show you how to import audio and how to create proximity triggers with sound. I'm looking forward to having you in the next one. See you there.